In the following presentation at the first annual scientific conference of the Institute for Research in Innovative Technology and Sustainability at the Open University of Hong Kong, engineer Andrew Y.K. Hoi, chief engineer at the Hong Kong Water Supplies Department, overviews some of the department's efforts, both to secure a stable water supply for Hong Kong and to conserve water wherever possible. Uh, today I'm going to talk about total water management in Hong Kong. In particular, I'm going to talk about the supply side management, how Hong Kong is moving from its current three tap, three water resources situation to a six tap scenario. Uh, when we talk about water resources in Hong Kong, we have to revisit how Hong Kong has developed over the last uh, 165 years. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the overall strategy uh, that we're using right now, uh, how we're transforming from three taps to six taps, and a very small conclusion. I'm trying to do this uh, a little bit light. There are no hard facts or hard figures in here. I'm just going to give a conceptual uh, presentation here. All of us, I think, in Hong Kong must be familiar with these pictures, these scenarios. Uh, that year was 1963. Between 1963 and 1964, for a whole year, we have water rationing. Four hours for every four days. Nowadays, I mean, I, I work on water supply operation. If you try to stop water supply for four hours, you'll be dead. I mean, phone calls will be coming in and everything. So we have gone a long way from a water-deprived city to a reliable water supply city right now. So let's go over what we have done over the, uh, the years. Uh, starting from the first well that we sunk in Hong Kong, 1851, we have moved from um, to the first uh, reservoir, 1863. And then in the uh, 1957, in the 50s, we have uh, started using seawater for flushing. Uh, right now, I think using seawater for flushing is, um, Hong Kong is a very unique city in doing that to such an extent. And uh, thanks to our pioneers, our predecessors, we have also um, started importing water from China, uh, starting from the uh, 1960s. And then we built two huge reservoirs from the sea, 68 and 79 in Prover Cove and High Island. And the timeline moves on, what we're going to talk about today and onwards, a total water management uh, water strategy. Just now we talked about the uh, exi existing three taps, a local catchment, Dong Jian water, and sea water for flushing. That has served us very well for the past uh, many years. I'm just going to briefly go through each of the uh, three resources. On the local water resources, uh, Hong Kong has this, uh, an area of 1,100 square kilometers. Around 30% of it has been designated as water gathering ground. We protect the water gathering ground from uh, pollution to make sure that we have a secure local water supply. And right now, we have 17 impounding reservoirs and the two biggest ones are, as I just said, Prover Cove and High Island. And we've got uh, reservoirs here and there, smaller ones. The uh, rainfall uh, average local yield in Hong Kong is about 295 million cubic meters a year, but it fluctuates. It fluctuates from 100 to 360. So the, you can imagine that if we solely rely on the local yield, we may run into problems. And Dongjiang water that we started to import from the uh, 1960s, right now the annual current ceiling is uh, 820 million cubic meters. And ultimately, we, uh, we can go up to 1,100 million cubic meters. That's the ultimate goal, but right now the current ceiling is 820. And seawater for flushing, uh, we have recently expanded our um, seawater supply network to the northwestern uh, new territories and the Fulham area. Now that brings us to a coverage, a population coverage of 85%. So 85% of the population of Hong Kong can enjoy seawater for flushing. So those are the three taps that I just talked about. 
and they have served us well. It's given us a very reliable water supply uh, supporting Hong Kong's development over the years. But of course, uh, life is never that simple. It's also always uncertainties and challenges. Hong Kong has, uh, has to face, like many parts of the world, problems ahead, challenges ahead, uncertainties. What are the uncertainties? What are the challenges? Climate change. We have been talking about climate change for many years. But now, in these last few years, I think every one of us can feel that climate change is no longer empty talks. It's already here with us. Look at a few uh, slides. I, I, I just searched them from the, from the internet. 2014, California, a drought. Taiwan, that was last year, 2015. I remember this one well, because I was planning on a trip to Taiwan, to the uh, Sun Moon Lake. But then Sun Moon Lake has become a Sun Moon field at that time, so I, so I didn't go. Uh, and then earlier this year, Thailand, another drought, water rationing. I'm just picking a few examples, many more. I mean, you go into Google, there will be many more. Who's next? I hope it's not Hong Kong, but let's look at Hong Kong. I'm, I'm not a climate expert, but I've been watching typhoons to see if I have to go to work tomorrow. Um, there are strange uh, movements of typhoons these, these few years. I mean, this one, when everybody is expecting that, you know, we, we, we were preparing for a typhoon or we're having a holiday to, uh, the next day, it gives a 180 degree turn and then a 90 degree one goes up. I think it is Japan. So, a three in one storm. Uh, that was in 2015, and I heard uh, while we were preparing all these slides, uh, there were uh, three storms uh, hitting Japan as well, and they are making strange movements as well. November last year, we have the hottest November over 130 years. And then two months later, we have the coldest day in Hong Kong for 60 years. So the climate changes, extreme weather is all coming. Uh, I, we can remember people going up to, uh, to the Tai Shan to look at the, uh, the, the, the snow or whatnot, and a very slippery um, scenario. So what are the impact of climate change on water resources? The rainfall will fluctuate a lot. Uh, there will be extreme rainfall or extreme droughts. Temperature will go up. Temperature goes up means you have more water loss from evaporation, from evapotranspiration. Uh, people may consume more water. Air conditioning uh, have to go up. Those kind of demand side and supply side impact as well. And one thing that we have to uh, uh, consider seriously is that if there is a climate change that affects Hong Kong, it may also affect the Dongjiang River region. Now, if both regions are affected, then our local supply and Dongjiang, we imported water from Dongjiang may be affected as well. So we have to consider that. So the uh, various challenges apart from climate change, uh, we have to face increasing water demand arising from economic and population growth. Uh, there is also many other cities along the, uh, depending on uh, Dongjiang water for their livelihood. I mean, these cities have their own economic and population growth, and so there, there, there is a huge demand for, uh, for water, for Dongjiang water. So back in 2008, Water Supplies Department has come up with a total water management um, strategy. There are many reports on, arising from that strategy, but um, the, the concept can be summarized in uh, three points. Be prepared for uncertainties, be prepared for challenges. We may be okay right now. We may have been okay for many, many years, but things should not be taken for granted. In water supplies management, uh, there, there are basically two methods, that you, two approaches. You either con contain your demand or you increase your supply. But we place a priority on that. We will put water conservation goes first. At the same time, we should also look for new water resources. The strategy was promulgated in 2008, and uh, things have been changing, and we, are, we have started a review 
on the uh, strategy um, in October 2014, and that review is ongoing. On the water supply side, the three water taps that we just looked at, we are moving to a six water tap situation by adding three climate change proof uh, water resources. Desalination water, reclaimed water, rainwater harvesting, and grey water reuse. I'll go through them briefly. Desalination. Uh, actually, Hong Kong had a desalination plant way back, 1975. But that was using uh, another technology, distillation. Uh, it was expensive, consumes a lot of energy, and it was later on uh, decommissioned. Time goes by. Um, Technology improves, and uh, uh, there, there is now the reverse osmosis uh, technology that consumes less energy. And Water Supplies Department has actually done some pilot testing back in uh, 2007 to prove that the um, reverse osmosis technology is suitable, is technically feasible for uh, producing potable water in Hong Kong. So we have uh, started to uh, do environmental impact assessment, finding sites, and we've found the site in Chung Kwan Area 137, and um, design is now in progress for uh, 50 MCM plant, and we are also going to build in some capacity, making provisions for future expansion to 100 MCM. That would cater for about five to 10% of Hong Kong's uh, freshwater demand. Reclaim water. Well, I'm actually putting reclaimed water and grey water um, on this slide here. Uh, in a typical household, we have the um, what we call black water, the sewage, coming from your toilets, and it goes to a wastewater treatment. What we are doing is instead of um, discharging the uh, treated wastewater to the sea, we are adding some value to that uh, wastewater by uh, hypochlorination and then reusing that water for toilet flushing or other non-potable use. And on the other side, the, the one in uh, yellow is gray water, where the water comes from your shower, from your, from your sinks, and whatnot. And you collect them, you treat them, it can be used for non-potable purpose as well. Likewise, we do rainwater harvesting, collect rainwater from the roofs, goes to the downpipe treatment, goes back up for um, non-portable use, toilet flushing, for example. Uh, and in Hong Kong, again, we have done um, pilot studies uh, a few years back. And right now, we are doing a financial and legal framework study on the use of reclaimed water. Uh, design of the infrastructure uh, is in progress, and we hope to be, uh, to be able to commence construction later on this year or early next year. And the idea is to start to supply reclaimed water, starting with Sheng Shui and Fanang in the northern uh, New Territories in 2022. And that will save around 21 MCM of uh, fresh water upon full commissioning. Rainwater harvesting system, uh, government has been taking a leading role in uh, the use of uh, rainwater harvesting systems. Um, right now, there are over 60 government buildings or schools are using rainwater harvesting. And um, if anyone of you are familiar with the government structure in Hong Kong, um, we have drainage services department who looks after flooding, flood water. And we have water supplies department, the one that I work in, uh, we supply water. There is synergy between the two of us. Uh, they hate water, we love water. So the, the two of us mix up uh, perfect partners. Um, they are doing a uh, huge stormwater storage tank in Happy Valley under the race course, collecting, um, intercepting the upstream flood water uh, to prevent flood. But then at the same time, the stored water can be used for uh, non potable purpose, irrigation of toilet flushing. Inter-reservoir transfer scheme is another big one. Uh, we have a group of small reservoirs in Kowloon. Now, because those reservoirs are small, they are susceptible to overflow under heavy rainfall. And the downstream drainage mechanism uh, uh, may not have the capacity to, to deal with it. So what we're going to do is we will build a tunnel from um, this small reservoir to a bigger one. 
so that we can catch any possibility, we will reduce the likelihood of overflow, and at the same time, we will prevent uh, flooding on the downstream side. So this one is uh, under design review at the moment. So just to recap, our existing three water resources, adding three, supporting the growth of Hong Kong and sustainable development of Hong Kong. Now that is the supply side. I mean, I'm supposed to talk about from three taps to six taps. But then when I got to that point, I think water resources management can never be complete without water conservation. So I, I have to add a few slides on this one. You have to bear with me on that. Water resource management is a lot like um, <clears throat> financial management. My wife keeps telling me, don't spend too much. A dollar saved is a dollar gained. Well, the same concept applies to uh, here, water resources. You save a drop of water, it's like you're gaining a drop of water. In fact, I would say that a drop that's saved is more than a droplet gain because when you have to do that, when you have to gain that droplet, a lot of work has to be put in. Resources have to be consumed. And if you can save that drop of water, you're not just saving that drop of water. You are also saving uh, the associated resources uh, in, in producing that drop of water. So what I say is a droplet saved is more than a droplet gained. Water Supplies Department has been doing a lot of work on uh, water conservation, a multi-pronged approach, software, and hardware measures. Uh, in the school year of 2015, we have started the Cherish Water Campus. Uh, right now, we have got uh, over 170 primary schools joining us. And the idea is to help these students put theory into practice. Uh, we are giving them the, uh, the knowledge and also encouraging them to put that into practice. We have launched a less safe 10 liter of water in the community. And we have built a water resources education center in um, our office in Mong Kok. That was a small one. It can accommodate a limited number of visitors. Last year, we had uh, 16,000 visitors um, to the center. But now we are also planning on building a new one in our new office in Tin Shui Wai. And uh, that would have a larger area, would have more enriched contents, and can cater for a wider range of um, audiences, uh, visitors. On the trade side, we are cooperating with the hotel and catering industry uh, to do some best practice guidelines, how they can save water in their everyday uh, business. And with government departments, uh, parks in uh, markets, how they're going to save water. On the hardware side, we're doing a lot of um, water efficiency labeling scheme. We have put that in. And we have also done uh, replacement and rehabilitation of water mains. And this is a new terminology, uh, which I'm going to go into. Uh, this is on the hardware side. I think all of you may have noticed that we have been doing some replacement work, uh, water main replacement work over the last 15 years. We have replaced uh, 3,000 kilometers of aged water pipes. How much is uh, 3,000 kilometers? I mean, if we fly here from here to Shanghai, is uh, 1,250. So if you do it round trip, it's 2,500. Still less than 3,000 uh, kilometers. So it's a lot. And um, after we have restored the health condition of our water supply network, we are changing our strategy to monitoring the health instead of doing a big operation like we did for the last 15 years. We have divided um, our water supply network into 2,000 smaller areas and putting in um, intelligent sensors that can monitor the um, water pressure, water flow, and feedback to our control stations. They will then decide on the priority of what kind of remedial works is required, whether we have to go for immediate repair, whether we should reduce pressure, and whatnot. So this is the, um, the strategy that we are moving on in um, monitoring the health of our water supply network. We call that uh, WIN, Water Intelligent Network. For those of you who may notice, there is another wheel in here. We talked about software, we talked about hardware. What then is the other one? 
The other one is what? I tend to go hardware. We've got the software, you've got the hardware, you have to have the heart to do it. I mean, water conservation is not rocket science. I mean, it's, it can all boil down to a simple change in habit. You take a shorter shower, um, uh, yeah, you, you don't run your water taps running, it's as simple as that. But you have to have the heart to do it, and we, if we all have the heart to do it, then we're going to save a lot of water. This is what we've been talking with colleagues. There were four A's in uh, water conservation. The four A's, awareness. You have to know the subject. You have to know the water resource is scarce. You have to know how you can help to conserve water. Alignment, you have to agree, you have to buy in. Action, you have to translate your knowledge into action. And then finally, advocacy. You have to help spread the message of water conservation. Conclusion, climate change is real. It's already here with us. We have to be prepared for the challenges. We're continuing to exploit new water resources from three taps to six taps. But we have to remember that a drop that's saved is a drop that gained. Water conservation is the cornerstone of water resource management. And we have to remember the hardware. We have to do it together for our future kids. History can repeat itself. Threat of climate change is real. 1963, a reservoir, dried reservoir. But if we can do something now, if we can do it all together, we can have a uh, fairy tale ending. We can live happily thereafter together. 多謝大家。